Hey, welcome back to Fiscal Voyage. My name is Felix and th today's video we're going to talk about two stocks that I'm looking at to purchasing uh, sometime this week. Both of these stocks are undervalued dividend growth stocks uh, and they have a very good yield of over 2.9% and higher so that's very positive. Uh, they have great balance sheet, you know, A credit rating uh, from S&P Capital. We're going to look at these two stocks and let me know in the comments uh, which of these two stocks you like or let me know as well what two stocks are you looking at to buy uh, this week. But before we get started if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to make money hit that like button as well. Also check out my free ebook in the description below so let's get started. So here's the first stock that I'm looking at for the week that's coming up uh, ticker symbol MRK. Uh, Merck and Co. It's a pharmaceutical company. You can see here the company uh, has been kind of flat throughout the uh, you know throughout the year, and it's got as low as uh, sixty-six dollars, sixty-five dollars, and as high as uh, eighty-four, eighty-six dollars here. Um, right now it's eighty-one dollars, and I could totally see this company going back to eighty-six and higher as we we'll look at some of the numbers in the Fast Graph, Morningstar, and Yahoo. Uh, so some details of this company earnings. They're projected to be about six dollars a share. Gives it give it a PE of thirteen point five. Dividend at four dollars and four two dollars and forty four cents uh, per share. Giving it a yield of about three percent. And if we look at the dividend history, uh, the company has been growing dividends for nine consecutive years at a decent rate of five point zero one percent, with a decent good payout ratio of only forty percent. So that's very positive news. And if we look at the yield to estimate kind of if it's undervalued, fairly valued, overvalued, you can see the current yield at 3.01 is slightly higher than the four-year average of 2.95. So this is a good indicator that might be uh, fairly valued to undervalued here. Uh, first, let's go to Morningstar and see uh, the company. Uh, Morningstar gives it a four-star rating out of five, which is a buy recommendation uh, based on Morningstar. Some key ratio. Uh, revenue for the past three years been growing at 5.6% rate. Net income outstanding rate of 36%. Uh, so that's really good uh, net income growth there in the past three years. Uh, Morningstar gives it a fair value price at 100. Uh, and as just uh, Friday closed at price at $81.09. So it gives it about $20 difference. Uh, this is some positive thing here. Economic moat. Morningstar gives it a wide. So that's very good there. Uh, wide and narrow is what would you want to look for, preferably wide, of course. And if we continue down to the financials, you can see here uh, price to sell, decent at 4.36. Uh, price to earnings, this is based on 2019, uh, and I think it's based on the um, uh, gap earnings instead of uh, non-gap. Uh, but here is where I, I like financial health. Interest coverage, 17.1%. Interest cover ratio with a debt to equity ratio of 0.98 or 1. Uh, very positive balance sheet. Uh, so I have no doubt that this company continue to uh, pay its debt and the balance sheet looks very healthy here. And if we look at some valuation metrics from Morningstar, you can see here price to sell. It is lower than the five year average, so that's positive there. Uh, price to earnings lower than the five year average. And the price to book is slightly higher here, about two, uh, uh, two basis points there. Peg ratio is lower, that's good here, 1.24 versus the five year average, so that's positive there. Uh, some other positive things that I like about this company uh, return on investment capital at 21.9 or 22% versus the five year average of 10, so that's very positive. So they're making more profit with their money that they invest. Uh, so I like that as well. Net margin. 24.3% versus the five year average of 13. So again, they're being more uh, efficient with their uh, revenue uh, and things like that and expenses. So that's very positive. Then we look at Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo has a fair price about $95 where Morningstar has a fair price about 100. As you can see here, currently at $81.09. So that's positive there. Uh, earnings trend, this is what I like to see. Uh, 2020, they're expected about $5.98. And remember, in um, uh, Sinking Alpha, it gave it about uh, earnings of about $6. So that's right in line, about a penny. Uh, next year, they're expected $6.38. So that's what I like to see. Current year, uh, higher than the previous year. And the following year, expected to be higher 
than the current year. So that's that's good news there. And Yahoo gives it uh, for the next five years projecting 6.7% uh, growth in earnings. So that's positive news there. So let's look at the fast graph for uh, Merrick. First, the company earnings you can see here has kind of like a wavy look to it, but is heading in the right direction. Uh, it's not too cyclical as some other companies. Um, if we look at the price, you can see here, this is why valuation is so important, guys. Uh, you can see here in 2001, it had a P around 26. Uh, and if you were to go all the way to where it is now, you've only had a total annual rate of return about 2%. Uh, so your $10,000 investment in 2001 uh, comes into $10,400. And most of your return came in through dividends um, and dividends reinvested. But you can see here, there's been times where this company had a P year of 11 or 12. They look to be more attractive uh, buy points in that time period. It's got, it had PE as low as uh, 8. And right now, it has a PE around 13.7. But this is where you know it's fine, I find it attractive because uh, earnings um, is 15%, expected to be 15% higher than last year. And uh, 2021, 6% higher and 10% higher in 2022. So that's positive news. I like to see that. Uh, let's show in this time period. You can see here if if the company reverted back to a multiple around 15, you can have a nice total annual return of about 15.5%. Um, this includes capital appreciation and the dividends. Uh, overall, it looks solid here. I like it when earnings are expected to grow higher and higher. And if we look at the forecast, um, the three to five year growth, uh, you can see here analysts are expecting about eight to nine percent growth so that's uh, very positive there so you could have a nice 13 to 14 percent annual rate of return uh, for this high quality type of company so that's real good the dividend yield like i said three percent earnings yield at 7.25 so that's attractive I'd like to see it at six and a half seven percent higher uh, blended pe of 13.7 or 13.8 which is lower than the normal multiple or even the uh, uh, 15 average multiple. You can see here S&P credit rate of AA minus was so investment grade quality company. Uh, long term debt to cap 45%. And as we saw in Morningstar, uh, interest coverage looks very, very good. Uh, and the debt to equity ratio at about one, very attractive. So overall, I think Merck and Co. Inc. is a very attractive company. This is why uh, this stock is in my watch list for this week. I may be purchasing some shares. I do own a few shares right now. Um, I think I bought it around uh, March low, so I am up about 7%, but I think I want to add more shares um, to this because I like what I see. The quality of this company is uh, superb, so I'm very happy uh, that this company haven't really increased as some other companies uh, you know, in recent week uh, because of the vaccine and things like that. So I'm very attractive uh, to buying this company sometime this week. So let's look at the second company that I'm looking at. So the second company that I'm looking at this week, uh, I actually bought shares of Intel actually uh, around this time period or, uh, on the 30th here, uh, uh, June 30th around there is when I bought some shares of Intel. So it was up slightly there, about 10% I think I was up. And then they had announced third quarter, then it dropped. So I think this presents a good buying opportunity for me to add more shares at a lower rate than what I bought uh, previously. Um, and I'm gonna look and you know talk about why I'm gonna be buying more shares of Intel, you know, at a lower rate. Uh, first, let's look at some uh, metrics here. Earnings are expected to be about four dollars and eighty-nine cents for the year for 2020. Uh, PE gives it a PE of 9.29, so that's a low PE. And we'll look at that over the uh, average for Intel. Yield at 2.9, so it is slightly lower than Merrick. Yield of three, but still an attractive yield. And if we look at the dividends for Intel, uh, they've been growing dividends for six years, five-year growth rate of 6.96, a very low payout of 26.9 or 27%, much better than Merrick at 40%. And if we look at the dividend yield, this is where you can see that the company is uh, undervalued based on the average. Uh, Four-year average yield of 2.56, and right now we get a yield of 2.9. So this is a good indicator that the company may be undervalued. And you can see in, in prior years, the company had a yield you know, of a, about 3.3, 3.4. So it's possible that this could go lower. But based on this indication, it looks like uh, a three and higher percent yield. 
is a good opportunity to buy more shares of Intel. So let's look at Morningstar, uh, what they give uh, Intel Corp. You can see Morningstar gives it a five star rating out of five, so that's very uh, good quality. Uh, revenue growth for the past year, average 6.61%. Uh, this is actually in the downtrend, but it's still growing revenue, so that's good news there. Net income growth, outstanding at 26.8%, so that's very positive news there. And the fair value price, you see Morningstar gives it a $70 fair price versus $45, so that's a good increase in uh, capital appreciation. This is why I like to buy undervalued, high, you know, good dividend growth stocks because the capital appreciation plus the good yield that you purchase is in. Uh, economic mode at wide, wide. Uh, again, that's good, real good compared to uh, narrow and none. So you like to buy companies with some kind of moat. Uh, wide, the wider the better. And, you know, so that's that. If we look at the financials here, price to sales attractive at 2.5, uh, price to earnings at 8.9 or 9, uh, interest coverage, wow, 44.6 uh, ratio uh, or 44.6 times the interest coverage. So that's very great. The higher this number, the better it is. And the lower this number, the better it is. Debt to equity ratio at 0 0.5. I like to see this at 1 and lower or 1.2 and lower. Uh, current ratio is good at 1.6. I like to see this at 1.5 and higher. And if we look at some valuation metrics, you can see here price to sell at 2.5 currently. It's lower than the five year average at 3.2. Price to earnings is lower than the five year average. And the price to book is lower than the five year average. So that's good there. Uh, peg ratio at 1.6. You like to see this at 2 and lower. Uh, 1.6 is good uh, versus the five year average at 2.14. And if we look at operating uh, performance, you can see here return on investment capital of 20.7 versus a five-year average of 16. So this is a good indicator that they're being, uh, you know, investing their money at a much better rate. So I like to see that. Uh, net margin also increased 28.10% versus the five-year average of 23. So that's real good. I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So we move over to Yahoo. You can see here, here um, if we look at the earnings trend, you can see this, you know, current year at $4.89 versus the next year at $4.56. This is because of the fact that the, uh, the processor is delayed, uh, which is supposed to generate more, you know, profit for the company. Uh, but I'm not too concerned with that as I think, you know, they'll come out sometime next year and then the following year, 2022, 2023, uh, earnings are going to be higher than what they are uh, for ne uh, next year's 2021 fiscal year. You can see here, Yahoo gives it a slightly lower fair price, about $53 versus the current price of 45. Uh, next five years earnings growth about 8%. So let's look at the fast graph for uh, Intel. Intel is kind of more cyclical than Merrick, as you saw in the previous fast graph. Uh, it has more ups and downs than the uh, previous company. And this is why I think, you know, this time is one of those down times where uh, the market or the stock or the company is, you know, having issues with the new processors and things like that, which is driving the earnings expectations lower. Uh, but once they resolve those issues, you know, I'm going to see, you know, those 7%, 8%, maybe 9% growth. Uh, we put in the price tag. Again, it's so important to purchase companies at a good fair price. Uh, you can see here the valuation of about 67 to 70. Uh, P.E. ratio was expensive. Uh, coming out to 9, you have a total annual return of 2.8. So this is why it's so important to buy undervalued companies. Uh, because you can have years of a flat uh, rate of return. Even though the company itself was growing earnings and they were doing a really good job. You can see here earnings growth. Uh, but because of valuation, you didn't really make any kind of money. Uh, you made profit, but not as much what you should have. Uh, and you can see here the green dots represent the time I bought shares. Uh, I can see here that, you know, obviously it's lower than my average, which is $48, uh, my cost basis. So right now at $45.46 uh, presents, a, you know, good buying opportunity to buy more shares at a lower price. Because if I liked it at $48, I sure will like it at $45. Um, so this is why I have it in my list for companies to buy this week and you can see here 
has a potential to grow at total annual rate of return of 17.7, which is slightly better, better than uh, Merck, the first company we looked at. Uh, but overall, you can see here the reason negative 5% uh, earnings growth from $4.89 in 2020, expectation to $4.65 for 2021. Uh, but still, the company is very solid. You can see here earnings yield is much better than the, than the last company, 10.75. Uh, dividend yield is light, slightly lower, but still real good at 2.9. Uh, S&P credit rating of A+, and alert 32% long-term debt-to-cap ratio, and a solid balance sheet for Intel uh, Corp. So overall, those two companies is what I'm looking at right now. I'm not sure which one I'm going to buy yet. We can determine uh, based on the market which one goes lower or which one jumped or and the other one didn't. You know, so that's how I'm going to determine which one I actually buy. So those are the two stocks that I'm looking at this week, Intel Corp and Merck. Um, I like both of them. I own both of them and I'm planning to uh, add more shares to both of them. Uh, hopefully I'm able to do that to both, but right now I'm going to pick one and it's going to be based on uh, what happens in the week for the market. You know, is one of them drops, you know, 5%, the other one jumps 10%, then I buy the one that dropped 5%. Uh, you know things like that. So I'm gonna look out for that and uh, Hopefully I, I'm able to buy both of these at current price or maybe even at lower price uh, a few dollars less So we'll see what happens. So again, let me know in the comments uh, Do you like these two stocks and are you buying any stocks this week? And let me know which one you're buying and you know, maybe we'll help each other out You know find good deals out there. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to make money, hit that like button as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.